Hey guys, I know a lot of people are asking questions about hosting apps on TrueNAS, and there's been a big discussion about what's the best way to do apps. Should I do something in this window, or should I use Dockage or Portainer? And some people don't even want to use TrueNAS at all. And I will tell you, that's actually what I do. My TrueNAS instance has very few apps on it. In fact, most of my apps are host on, hosted on a LXC in Proxmox. So today, I'm actually going to show you how to do something more similar to my setup. Um, if you have Proxmox or you're using Proxmox, or maybe you just want to set up a virtual machine within TrueNAS, basically I'm just going to show you how to host apps somewhere else and then connect them back to True app, TrueNAS in the event that you don't want to use TrueNAS. So um, let's say I already have the storage here and I have some shares. I have my media folder and this is already shared. So let's go to my data protection, my shares actually. So I'm already sharing media, which is great. So let's come over to Proxmox. What I want to do here is I'm going to show, now you can do this with anything you want. This could be a totally separate machine. This could be on Proxmox. This could be a VM inside TrueNOS, but I'm just going to basically spin up a Docker container. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do that using a T-Tech script. Now, in case you don't know about T-Tech, um, unfortunately he's very sick right now and he's not doing well, but this is the post I did on the blog. You'll see it. Um, the repository that he's using is still going to be maintained by the community. So this is the repository. Um, so I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to search Docker. This is Docker LXC. So this is the default. I'm just going to copy this. This is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Come over here and I'm going to paste that script. And I'm going to go to the advanced settings. And I'm going to show you what I mean. And this is what I actually do. So I want to use Ubuntu and I want to use 2404. I use privileged containers, and I'm not going to set any passwords. This is going to be Docker test. You guys call it anything you want. Uh, the disk size, I'm going to do 30. I'm going to do all my CPU cores, and I'm going to do 10,000 megabytes, and everything else I'm going to leave completely the same. Oh, wait, hold on. Add portainer, I'm going to say no. Retainer agent, no, because I'm going to do all that immediately. I do want to add Docker Compose, but it's okay because the script is going to do a whole lot of that for us. Cool, so it's done. So now I'm going to come over here to... So what I want to do is I want to grab this script. So, not you. This is the script. Um, copy this. So, again, a little quick command line. Where am I? I'm in slash root. What else is here? There's nothing here. There we go. This is what it's supposed to look like. So we do want to run the updates. That's cool. I want to use the group ed. I do want to install that. I want to install webmin. I'm going to let it do, run the Docker thing. That's fine. Um, even though Docker's already in here, it's probably just going to end up skipping. It's going to say, you already have Docker. No big deal. Um, it's going to install Portainer for me. I'm going to let it do that just because I'll show you guys some demos on Portainer. So here's the media directory structure. Um, I'm not going to do any of this because... Um, I already have it. So I'm going to control K this. Do a bunch of control K's. K. And this is the Docker network. I'm also not going to do that. So there we go. Control X, Y, enter. And now I'm going to give it permissions to execute. OK. And now I'm going to execute it. There we go. So you'll see it's doing all these things. Mm -hmm. So yes, I do want to install the webmin repository. That shouldn't have been prompted like that. I should modify that script. There we go. So it's doing webmin right now. Always run the script as root, by the way, as you see me doing. I'm just going to need some permissions to do stuff. Setting up webmin. Docker's ready the latest version. That's cool. It's installing Portainer and all the dependencies for Portainer. This is the pull. All right, it's done. So now that that's done, I should be able to, I want to know what IP this is on. This is on 1099.0.4. So let's come over here. So the first thing we want to look at is Webmin. There we go. This is what it's supposed to look like. 
and Webmin is up and running. The issue is I don't have a password, so I don't think it's going to let me sign in. Yeah, so I'd have to make an I'd have to make a root password for this, or a uh, a user that'd be able to sign on. But Webmin is running, so let's come over here. Let's look at Fortainer. This is a good thing again too. Fortainer is up and running. I'd be able to create my admin user here. If I wanted to do that, that's great. So this is up and running. So the last thing I want to do, again, if you're going to do this to set up all your, you can have done Fortainer, you could have done Dockage, anything. But once you've gotten here, you know it's already working. I'm not going to show you guys all that stuff. I just want to get to kind of the meat of it, which in this case, the only thing I'm missing is my mount. So let's show how to do mounts right now. So now we're going to clear. I don't want a nano. Etsy, FS tab, you'll see there's nothing in here. So now we're going to add one. We're going to add the mount. So we're going to add the TrueNOS box. To mount tank media. I'm going to mount it to the local media directory. It's going to be an NFS share with defaults. Zero, zero. You know what I noticed that wasn't in this script, which I'll check in a minute. It's all right, but it's fine. Let's uh, control X and Y. Okay. And there it is. There's my mount tank media. So I already added it in the FS tab. So when I do the restart, it should mount automatically. But now we can go to media, for example. And look at that. There's all directories. There's my downloads. There's my movies. There's my TV. It's all right there. Is there anything in downloads? Let's see. Yep, Night of Living Dead is actually there. So how cool is that? So now what we've managed to do is we've managed to set up a completely separate Docker, well, in this case, a container running Docker, Docker Compose, Portainer. I've mounted my TrueNAS share here. So now what I can do is I can go into Portainer and I'd be able to start using Docker Compose files to, or Dockage if I wanted to and use Docker Compose files, start doing stacks and then pointing all these at the directories that are here because it's mounted from TrueNOS and now it will be using my TrueNOS media, which of course in your house is probably a much, much bigger storage setup than I have. But um, this remote machine now is going to be connected over NFS to my TrueNOS machine. And that's going to allow me to use all that good TrueNOS share to run Docker containers um, and connect them on the back end to that. So again, this works for this. This is an Ubuntu machine. Um, you could have done this directly on TrueNOS by doing a virtual machine and just adding here and then just using uh, the Ubuntu ISO file or whatever virtual machine you want. You guys can use Arch, you guys can use Debian, you guys can use CoreOS if you wanted to do that. Um, but any machine will work and that's basically the only steps. Uh, I added Webmin just so I can get a dashboard. You don't even have to do that. If you don't even care, you can look at the dashboard on Proxmox and say, hey, this is plenty. I don't need any more than this to know what's going on inside that machine. The only thing I'd probably recommend you add to this machine that I didn't um, is going into cron tab. So let's look at cron tab dash E. And I want to use nano. You'll notice here there's nothing here. The one thing I would add, shift enter. And that would be sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. Spell it right, dash y, like that. There we go, like that. So now you see my changes took. And every night at 3 a.m. right now, this machine would just run updates. So I don't even have to come here and update this machine. Ubuntu will stay updated by itself. So little things like that. And you know what I'm going to do? Actually, I'm going to add this into the script so you guys won't even have to do that. So it's going to make it even simpler. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much how this goes. Very simple to do. And if you're interested in doing something like this, I highly recommend it because it's very, very simple. And it really starts to just make you a better system admin by being able to run things on separate machines and practicing doing things other than just in the TrueNOS interface.